What's up, y'all? What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome to Church Boy Confessions, episode 160. Jeez Louise. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, okay. Um, Yeah, it's been a couple weeks since I got behind this mic. Um, It's been really busy. A lot of things have been happening, Um, kind of in my community. And also, we had UA Day last weekend. And the reality is, the event was amazing. Um, But I was extremely tired going into that event, in that event, and after that event, and it was just impossible. Well, I wouldn't say anything was ever impossible, but um, it was just too much to have to get behind this mic, like, after having done all that. So, you know, apologies. I didn't really give anybody, like, a fair one. Like, two, two, two weeks in a row of an archived episode was not the plan. But I do hope that those archived episodes or rediscovered, unearthed. Yeah, I like, I like that word, unearthed. I, I do hope that the unearthed episodes could have been like, you know, helpful. I did like have some prayer and um this like, you know, decision making process to choosing those specific episodes and you know, I hope that they were applicable to you and that you know, they they could really they could really have helped you, you know. Some for some of you probably the first time you even heard those episodes because um some of those episodes were out before the podcast was really getting more popular. But um yeah, no, I appreciate you guys tuning in once again, 100, episode 160. We are still here, 160 episodes later. A whole 160 of them. Wow. Um, Shoot, you know, first things first, I got to thank everybody who was out here in L.A. Well, yeah, was out in L.A. for UA Day. I want to thank you if you came out. I want to thank you if you contributed in different ways. Um, It meant a lot. For all the people who were there, it really meant a lot. And I think that ultimately that event was a vision of, like, it's going to go more. More is going to happen. More glory is going to be seen in it. Um, That event was literally what I envisioned in terms of it being a time of Christian community and creativity. You know, Um, sometimes it's hard to articulate why we do things the way that we do things but i hope that after an event like that for everyone who was there and that witnessed it it becomes clear and the the way we deliver the way we package the gospel and the way we package what this christian life is and how we want to communicate the gospel to you it's different than what you probably have seen before and i don't say any of that to toot our horn god forbid all glory goes to god every every creative idea that you see come out of this mouth see you come out of this this ministry all glory goes to god um but i say that just so you understand that the things that this ministry is doing i, I truly believe that god has plans and a vision for the youth for young adults man and God wants us to move and God really wants to help people. It's a lot of young adults that are lost. It's a lot of young adults that that can be on fire for the Lord right now in their youth, but they're not, man. Um, and, you know, I feel like a part of our mission, Unassociated, is to help those people become more comfortable with being on fire for Jesus. You know, it's, it, it doesn't have to be uncool. And it doesn't have to be something that's like uh, corny or quirky or cringy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm cool. Like, you feel me? <laughs> Ain't nobody finna tell me I'm not cool. <laughs> I can be a little corny sometimes. You know what I'm saying? But if you make corny cool, then it's cool, you know? But nevertheless, man, I, I really do appreciate everyone that contributed, everyone that was a part of it, everyone that that was there, like, um, and all the people who helped volunteer as well, like, just kind of randomly. Um, I just really appreciate that. All the vendors that were there, I really appreciate you guys. And, you know, it definitely makes me want to do more and more events in Los Angeles. So maybe maybe we see that happening. But nevertheless, man, I, I thank you guys for listening. I thank you guys for tuning into this episode. Um, what I wanted to talk about this episode was really leaning into the episode where we left off two weeks ago, talking about spiritual warfare. Interestingly enough, Kendra had an episode on spiritual warfare last week. And it actually really goes in line with what I want to talk about today. Um, So, you know, some of the notes that I had, some of the things that I touched on last time, um, we're talking about how spiritual warfare and how it looks more like it's more than just demon possession. 
Um, you know what I'm saying? Spiritual warfare can look like discouragement. It can look like laziness. It can look like dissatisfaction, comparison, and so on and so on and so on. Um, and and I talked about how like a lot of us we don't like to talk about spiritual warfare. We don't really like to talk about spirituality. We don't like to talk about you know the Holy Spirit and us actually combating demons because it makes us look crazy it makes us look stupid you know what i'm saying it makes us look like we lack critical thinking skills like all the atheists want to say time and time again um but the real thing is that you know it's really happening whether you believe in it or not everybody's getting smoke whether you're a believer or not everybody is under some type of spiritual oppression or 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 spirits are trying to oppress you that are not of God. And the reality is, you know, I, I can get behind this mic and I can give you an episode talking about having more faith in God and having more trust in God and, and loving other people and forgiving other people. And all of that is great. All of that is great. Um, but I do, un I do need us to all understand that as a community, as young Christians, as young adults, as people who are looking to be on fire for the Lord, you know, there's a difference between eating the baby food and, and eating the, the adult food. And, and I don't say that to belittle anybody. But at some point, we have to get off the baby food. At some point, like we always go back to the basics and we always like, you know, reiterate, you know, lessons that we need to learn. We all we all we all need the refresher on on so many different fundamental topics and doctrine in Christianity. But what I will say is that sometimes we get too comfortable with just talking about the same topics over and over and over again. And we forget that right now, today, there are people in spiritual bondage and there are people under spiritual oppression and it's about time that we pray and we fast and we speak about these things and we speak against these things actively now and we fight in the spiritual warfare now and we talk about these things. You know, it, it's, it's for some of us, we need to graduate from being babes in Christ to being soldiers in the army of the living God, you know. Be soldiers. Have the word of God in your mind to where you, when you get an intrusive thought or when you have some type of spiritual attack, whatever it might be, you're rehearsing. You're, you're, you're just reiterating. You're, you're, you're reminding yourself of all these verses. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ. Uh, I'm focusing on things that are true. Um, um, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, uh, God cannot lie. He's not a man that he can lie. You know, I'm the apple of his eye, so on and so forth. I mean, you're just calling on truth. You're calling on verses to combat the devil, to combat the lies, and so on and so forth. Man, I want us as a community to graduate to being soldiers in the army of the living God. You know, I want us to get to that point where, I, and I'm, I try to say this in a way that's like not too, um, like don't take this the wrong way, but it's like, where you don't relate to people anymore. Obviously, we, we want to relate to people. I try to relate to you guys like every episode. But it's like you stick out still like a sore thumb everywhere you go because of your faith and because of your demeanor and because of the way you carry yourself, because of how you talk about Jesus, because of how you pray, because of how, because of how, how you just follow Christ, man. Because of your commitment. I mean, this is kind of straying away from the topic, but do you want to know something that's so interesting to me? I've had, I've, I've seen multiple times, like just people talking on TikTok. And what's interesting to me is that, and not, not just on TikTok, but in person as well. It seems as though there's a lot, there's a group of people who are not believers today. And the reason why they're not believers today is because they don't understand how their life would be different from, from what it is now if they were Christians. And you know why they think that? It's because they're Christians friend. Their, their Christian friends behave the same way that they do. Their Christian friends are getting drunk with them. Their Christian friends are partying with them. Their Christian friends are cussing just like them. Their Christian friends are doing behaving exactly like them. So then how can we expect our friends to want to know Christ? How can we talk to our friend and say, hey, there's a better life than the life you're living right now when we're literally living the same life as them and behaving the same as them? around them and all they're exposed to the christianity they're exposed to is a christian that's living exactly like them what are we selling what are we convincing what are we what are we putting forth and if you think that 
you're trying to just relate to them in that way to where you're behaving like them and hopefully one day they're going to come to Christ, you're wrong. Sometimes the way to draw somebody to Christ is not acting like them. It's not being in the same space as them, be not being in the same room as them. Because when you're not in the same space as them, but you're in a higher room, you're in a better room, that's what attracts them to make that transition from where they're at to where you're at in Christ. But that's not what I'm talking about today. But that's something that did that has been on my mind. Um, spiritual warfare, man. You know, these past, this month, it's been a lot just going on this month in my life. Good things, you know what I'm saying? Like just, you know, different family event after family event after family event. We I just came back from one not too long ago. Um, shout out to my cousin, you know, my that just got uh, married this past weekend as well. You know, that was that was really fun. Um, but, you know, what's what's so interesting is that, like, you know, you have those amazing things happening. You're around family, you're about, around all these different things. But if you're anything like me, you know, spiritual warfare looks like intrusive thoughts. They look like intrusive thoughts of jealousy, of comparison, of of dissatisfaction, of impatience and so on and so forth. And when I tell you that I have. You know, I even posted about this earlier, um, where it's just this year I've, I've gone through so many diverse different trials, man, um, that really just been wearing me out, man. And, and like this past week, just like especially while planning for things with UA, they, the enemy was just attacking me spiritually and I was tired. And I don't know, man, like, you know, some people might have noticed it, but like even at UA, Day, if I'm being completely transparent, man, I was tired and I was like, I've been under um warfare i have been um i'm better now you know what i'm saying like god has been helping me um but you know it, it was definitely tough and i i, I do want to share the verse that really helped me through the entire time and is continuing to help me and interestingly enough man I, i've gotten i think on the other side like of this spiritual warfare like this season and i and i, I want to share like this verse that really you know, gave me a lot of power and helped me to um, combat these lies. Um, Kendra had, had mentioned it on her episode, um, but I'm going to mention it here as well. It's Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 6. Now, Apostle Paul is um, speaking to Corinthians, and, I've, and, I, and the entire point of what he was, like, trying to say wasn't exactly just based off of this passage on spiritual warfare. If I remember correctly, I, I believe he was talking about, like, he was ultimately talking about how like he appears to be weak in person, like meek and like physically weak in person, but like spiritually he's strong. And he was trying to tell people to communicate that he's strong spiritually. Um, but yeah, I'm not even focused on the entire chapter, but I am focused on this little snippet. Like, you know, if, if you're accustomed with some of Apostle Paul's like writings, like, um, you know, sometimes he'll be trying to make one point, but in the time he's trying to make one point, he's made a million great points about different things. Like if you read Galatians, I feel like that's a good example of that. Um, but nevertheless, I'm going to read Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 6. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And being ready to punish all disobedience with your obedience when your obedience is fulfilled. May God bless hearing and reading, understanding of his word in Jesus name. Amen. Now, I believe in my study Bible, you know, what Paul was specifically referring to were disputers in that time or false teachers in that time. Um, that's why it says like casting down arguments and so on and so forth. Um, but ultimately, we're talking about, you know, Apostle Paul referring to a spiritual warfare that that you know in verse three where it says that for though we walk in the flesh we do not war according to the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnival mighty for, through the um mighty in god for the pulling down of strongholds you see the first point that i think is very important for us to understand about spiritual warfare and i talked about it last week is that it's spiritual warfare it's not physical warfare that's why apostle paul said that we walk um that we walk that I'm sorry, that we walk in the flesh, but we do not war according to the flesh. You see, I feel like a lot of us, especially when it comes to overcoming some type of 
temptation or whatever it might be, we think that the solution to the temptation is through physical means, is through our vows, is, is through our determination and so on and so forth. But the word of God says that though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. You've been under these spiritual attacks. You've been under the, the, the spiritual attack of depression, the spiritual attack of dissatisfaction, the spiritual attack of comparison and all these intrusive thoughts. It's time to fight spiritual with spiritual. It's time to fight with the weapons that are mighty through God to the, for the pulling down of strongholds. You see, when you are under a spiritual attack, what you need to do is to run to God. Because the Bible says that our the weapons of our warfare for spiritual warfare are mighty through who? Through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Spiritual warfare is not something that we're supposed to do alone in fact it's impossible for us to be victorious if we go about it alone because the weapons that we use in this spiritual warfare are mighty through god casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of god and this is my favorite part of this verse verse 5 of this passage, verse 5, bringing every thought into ca captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now, when I hear this, this is so amazing to me because I've lived a life of having so many intrusive thoughts. You know, the enemy always wants to attack me with intrusive thoughts, all these different lies, all these different things to make me anxious, all these different things to make me so fearful of the future. But, you know, as of late, when I read this passage, it just helps me to understand that I am not at the mercy of my own thoughts. I'm not at the mercy of the intrusive thoughts. You see, when the Bible says I can bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, now it switches my mindset to where I don't have to be held captive by my thoughts. No, I'm going to hold my thoughts captive. I'm going to subject my thoughts and control my thoughts enslave my thoughts to align with christ that's what spiritual warfare looks like it looks like enslaving your thoughts to force it to agree with christ agree with scripture when i started to apply this to my life man it has helped me to have peace in time of storm. It has helped me to be able to relax and have some type of security because I, I catch my mind when my mind wants to run off to think about X, Y, and Z and how messed up A, B, and C is and how I need to fix D, E, and F or whatever it might be. I get to, when I remember this verse, I get to reel it back in like, wait, 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 where is this thought coming from? Is it coming from the Holy Spirit? If the answer is no, and it's not coming from the Holy Spirit, then right then and there, I can cast it down and I can tell those thoughts, hey, you know what? You are my captive. You are my hostage. You are my prisoner. I'm not a slave to intrusive thoughts. They're a slave to me. You know what I'm going to do instead of allowing these intrusive thoughts or whatever it might be, spiritual warfare to mess up my mind? I'm going to do what Apostle Paul instructs us to do in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, verse to 8 to 9. He says, finally, brethren, whatever, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is any... Uh, is there is anything praiseworthy meditate on these things the things the things which you have learned and received and heard and seen in me these do and the god of peace will be with you i am taking the advice here in scripture that tells you what to think and when you think these things the god of peace is with you Think on things that are true. Now, I just want to stop right there. We could talk about things that are just, things that are pure, things that are lovely. We understand the point of what's being said. But I'm 
in the season of where I must force myself to only think on things that are true. You're not going to tell me that my plans for the future are going to mess up because you don't know that my plans for the future are going to mess up. You don't even know that your plans for the future are going to mess up. So you continuing to accept these ideas that your future is dim, that oh, everything's going to fall apart, that you're going to fail, that you're going to be a failure, so on and so forth. It's not true because it can't be true. <laughs> In fact, if anything's true about your future is that you have an eternal life of paradise. The devil's not going to tell me what's going to happen tomorrow. He doesn't know what's going to happen tomorrow. The demons don't get to tell me how my day's going to go. They don't know how my day's going to go. And they don't know what I'm packing with either. I got God on my side. You see, that's what it looks like. It looks like when you wake up in the morning... And you have all these reasons to think that it's going to be a terrible day. Instead, reminding yourself that just like the mountains surround Jerusalem, God surrounds his people. I believe that Psalms 125 has been on my mind. You remind yourself that he keeps those in perfect peace whose minds are stayed in him because they trust in him. Isaiah 26.3. You see that? You remember when he tells you, don't fear, don't be dismayed, for he is your God, because he's your God. Be of good cheer. You remember sometimes when he says things like, peace be still. You remember the examples in, in, in the scripture when, when prosperity came to people and victory came to people when God delivered it to them. I'm telling you, man. I'm done being a slave to my thoughts. I'm done being a slave. And I'm done being oppressed under spiritual warfare. We don't have to be. I'm not going to lie, man. I've been tired. I'm actually going to tell you guys, like... You know, I, I've started to see it in a better light, um, but for a good chunk of like the past four months, um, let me say, th I, guess, I guess I could say this summer, I have had so many, well, okay, it's really been the year. I have had so many like different problems. <laughs> I'm talking problems that I've never previously had particularly you know lawsuits legal problems death i don't want to console grieving mothers it's not something that i like to do i mean you know different responsibilities for the first time in my life it's just it's been so much so and it's been one after the other after the other. And then even when I think that um that that like I, I, I ended that one, then another thing happens. And it's just like I get to those points where it's like, yo, like why can't I just have a week of just of just like it's cool? Or why can't I actually just sit down and relax? But it's something. And I get tired. I get tired. It's funny. I'm sorry, like for everybody on TikTok, <laughs> Maddie, Maddie is, you know, our TikTok wizard and she wasn't, she wasn't um, on vacation last week. So like I was supposed to have the responsibility of posting all the TikToks. But when I tell you, man, like, it's just, I, I apologize because <laughs> there were no TikTok. There was one TikTok posted last week. I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. Like, um, it's just wasn't on my mind like it was just a lot of other things to think about and and i and i apologize for that um but that's just really an example of like where my mind is at a lot of the time and um you know i'm thankful because sometimes when i'm in those spaces i feel like god do you hear me you know and I know that a lot of you guys can probably relate to those moments where it's just like you stop, like, you know, you're, you you could be soaking, you could be crying, you could be so frustrated. But then it's just like, God, hello. Like, can you hear me? You're actually curious. Like, what on earth 
are you waiting on? What are you doing? Where are you at? So on and so forth. Um, but last week, man, I decided to kind of spontaneously pray and fast um, because I was feeling heavy. And, you know, I, be- I believe that God has really been maturing me to the point where I'm not just going to be heavy and sulk in it. I'm going to try to stay in my word. I'm going to try to continue to serve God and be enthusiastic and, and all that different stuff. So I was in my word. I said, you know, I'm going to pray and I'm going to fast. I recognize this is spiritual warfare, so I'm not going to give in. You know, I'm going to pray and I'm going to fast today. And I prayed and I fasted today. And just like I was explaining to you that I had these diverse different issues that have been going throughout this um, year that I've been facing. And then I made the post. Go to my Instagram and look. It's like a black, it's it's a black, uh, it's white text on a black background. It's a post. I said I've been going through diverse trials this year, but it's been a maturing year. Tell me why I completely forgot about the verse that specifically mentions what I was talking about. And I was reminded of this verse when I was praying and fasting. And it's James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. It says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be up. I'm sorry, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Guys, you don't understand. I worded what how I was feeling and my problem exactly, almost exactly how scripture worded it. Scripture said various trials. I said diverse trials or a diverse array of problems. And I but I still noticed how it was maturing me because that's exactly why God has sent those things my way, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But then here's the kicker. Here is when the Holy Spirit really had the text jump out and grab my throat because it was stepping on and then started stepping on it. But let patience have its perfect work. The part that really stuck out to me was the let part. Let patience have its perfect work. Almost like God was telling me, let it just go through it. Go through it. Emmanuel, go through it. So many times we we go through the diverse array of trials and we're just longing for the end to come. I've preached about this before, but I guess I'm preaching about it again for me. Sometimes when we go through issues in life, we're waiting. We are clawing. We're, we're, we, we just so much want for it to be done. And that's the only thing we focus on. When is it going to be over? When is it going to be over? When is it going to be over? But the scripture says to let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Sometimes it's not about clawing to the other side. It's about allowing the problems to happen. And not trying to get to the end of the finish line, per se, but just remaining encouraged and enduring this time. Sometimes that that's what victory is. It's not conquering the problem, but it's enduring the problem with the power of God. And I know that that might like you might think, but I thought it's spiritual warfare. We're casting out demons, all that different stuff. Absolutely, don't get me wrong. You know, some of these problems is spiritual warfare, but then also some of these problems is a controlled environment. Like, you can be getting attacked straight up and the devil's attacking you in order to destroy you. But you're still in a controlled environment where the mission here is for you to be tested and is for you to pick up your Bible and set that time to spend with the Lord in order to be encouraged so you can endure this time. And that's what the battle looks like. That's what you fighting back looks like. It looks like you drawing closer to Christ for your strength and for your peace and for your joy and so on and so forth. So you can let patience have its perfect work because 
you're going to get to the other side at the appointed time. I believe that with all the issues that I've been going through, you know, God has been keeping me and molding me and maturing me. Um, and if I'm being completely honest with you, when I actually think about the type of person that I am, like if I try to envision that I'm someone else and I'm looking at me, and I don't, I'm not gonna, I don't mean to this, for this to come as prideful. I respect me. And I don't think I've ever respected myself more than now in my life. I can say that wholeheartedly. It's been a tough year, but I am very proud of the man that I am today. I am. I am. <laughs> and I hope that that can be a point of encouragement. Um, you're probably going through it right now. But, you know, make sure you're fighting. You know what I'm saying? and But do be encouraged that when you let patience have its perfect work, you're not trying to rush through the problems. You just, you let it, you let the process happen. You're going to be very happy with the results. I don't even think I'm done. I think that, you know, I'm liable to have a lot more issues. A lot of, you know, the issues and stuff hasn't really gone away yet, but, you know, I'm still chipping away at it um but i must say i must say that i genuinely respect me i do i'm happy like i'm happy about the human being that i am and i would i would if i were not me i would be friends with me like if i were not me i'd really want to be closer to me and like i said i really don't mean that to like toot my own horn but that just goes to show that like I have noticed the work of God in my on my character and on my behavior and on my thought process and so on and so forth. And a lot of it has, has been because of these trials forcing me to be more empathetic, forcing me to be more wise and more careful um, and so on and so forth. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, trials and tribulations are no joke. Spiritual warfare is no joke. Um, make sure you stay encouraged. Make sure you stay prayed up. Make sure you stay fasted up. Make sure you stay all of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, sorry if you hear my sister yelling in the, in the background, but but yeah, no, I, I really appreciate y'all uh, for tuning in once again, man. Um, that's pretty much all I got to say today. Um, I think, you know, I don't know, man. I, I really like having these, like, just kind of like more raw conversations. Um, but I do have to make sure that, you know, we teach, we teach in some real theology with some order and some structure as well. So, I mean, I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe every now and then we have these like raw episodes and, just like really talk and have these conversations and um, got to make sure that, you know, we come with the teaching as well. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys listening to, to me ramble the past couple, these past, well, well, aside from the unearthed episodes, these past couple weeks, but let's pray. Father God, thank you so much, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you so much for, this word and i just pray that it encourages us to take our thoughts as captives oh god and for us to both fight and endure and conquer lord jesus in the places we're supposed to conquer and endure in the places we're supposed to endure and just ultimately keep our eyes fixed on you um just live and breathe through you oh god as the weapons of our warfare are mighty through you oh god 
So I just pray, Lord, that you be with us into this week. This week can have challenges and trials and tribulations, and many of us have already gone through it. Many of us are listening to this on whatever day that we listen to this, or every night that we're listening to this, Lord, and we're already at rock bottom. Things have been so tough, God, but right now we make the decision to get up. We make the decision to cling to you. We make the decision to worship you and praise you even when we don't feel like it, oh God. Father God, we make the decision, Lord, to fight back. We're not sulking this week. We're not sulking. We're not complaining. We're not murmuring. We're not saying, oh, why is this happening to me? Father, instead, Lord, we're picking up our Bibles. Instead, we're praying. Instead, we're deciding to fast randomly. We're not even going to tell anybody we're fasting. We're just going to fast randomly so we can truly feel more intimate with the Holy Spirit and let your spirit flow through us in our mind, in our body, in our soul. Oh, God, let it be evident, Lord Jesus, even the people that are around us, Lord. God, help us, mature us, oh God. Build us, Lord Jesus. The trials that we're going through right now, help us, Lord, to be molded as we ought to be molded by it, oh God. And then to conquer it, Lord Jesus, when it is time. Deliver the victory into our hands, the prosperity into our hands, oh God, like you delivered victory into the hands of the Israelites time and time again. Father, let your name be glorified in our lives. Let your glory shine through our lives, even in our weaknesses, even in our trials and tribulations, oh God. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. Father, we thank you, Lord, for being our Father, not just our God, but our Father. Excuse me, for seeing the things that we're going through, for helping us through them, for keeping us through them, for rising a standard and saying that they can't do more than this. So we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. Um, Bible study is not going to be next week. Um, Bible study next week is Labor Day, Memorial Day, one of those. Um, so then we're going to have it, I believe, September September 12th. It's Labor Day. Labor Day next week. So, yeah, we're going to have it September 12th instead. Um, and, yeah. Oh, yeah, T-shirts. T-shirts, T-shirts, T-shirts. Um, we do have some, some left over from UA Day. So those are going to be popping up online for people. Yeah, a couple of people were asking me if they could buy a T-shirt. Um, yeah, that's, that's going to be online at some point. I just got, you know, a million things to do, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, no, we're, we're definitely going to make sure that everybody else is accessible to those. The toe bags are gone though. That's not going to happen. Um, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? You never know. We're going to pull out the sleeves at those live events. So, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, shout out to people who got a tote bag. Like I got mine. I haven't decorated mine yet, so I'm not going to pull it out. But, um, so yeah, no, it's dope. It's dope. It's dope. I hope you guys have an amazing week. I love you guys. Peace.